Welcome to Jewelry Designer Manager Tips. For this tip, we're going to focus on adding photographs to Jewelry Designer Manager and also share some information about how to size photographs and what to think about when you're sizing photographs. To start, we're going to go into Jewelry Assembly and Pricing, which is your finished goods part of the database. And you can either go in through this button or you can go up to the top menu and click on Jewelry Pieces. And when we go into the jewelry piece screen, come over here to the right and you'll see that we have a photo commands box and it's empty. See these two dots at the bottom? This indicates that you can load two photographs into your finished goods and that's very useful for showing two different views of the same piece of jewelry. Adding a photograph is very simple. You just click load and that will open up an explorer box and you can navigate to the folder that you want to use for selecting your item. And let's just add this star ring. So there we have a back view of a star ring. And now to add the second photo, you need to click in the circle that's not highlighted to open up the next window. And then you click on load. And now let's add this view of the star ring. So now we have two photographs of the same finished item. One's a back view and one's a front view. And that information will now travel with all of the other item information you would be setting up here. But what happens when you have very, very large photographs? As most photographs are when you take them either with a good camera or even with a smartphone camera, the photographs tend to be very large. And those very large photographs take up a lot of space in the database. And if you're going to use Jewelry Designer Manager as sort of the feeder for your Etsy photographs or um, you know, as your holding place for photographs that you'll use on the website, those very large photographs will slow everything down. And they don't necessarily do anything for the sale of your item. So you're going to need to resize photographs to be more appropriate for the way you're going to use them. And you're going to look for the maximum possible quality of the item in the smallest possible photo size. So how do you do that? We well, are going to need a photography tool to do that. One of our favorite tools for accomplishing this is called bulkresizephotos.com. It's a free online service and once you enter the URL you'll see this screen pop up and you just drag and drop your images here or you can click on this little green box and choose your images from a folder but dragging and dropping is really easy so let's open up our photo folder and click on a couple of different photos just so we can demonstrate how to drag and drop them just grab six or seven photos here And now just click on one of the highlighted photos and drag them into this drag and drop box. And as you can see, it recognized the photos by turning green and it shows us that we're transferring seven photos into the screen. And as soon as we drop those photos, a new screen opens up. And this is the screen that allows us to size the images. Now you can do the size a variety of ways. One is to just scale the images. So if you click on scale, you can say, well, let's just scale all of our images to some percentage of the original size. This works really well if all of the images that you're using are the same size to begin with. And it is ideal to have all of your photos the same size because they'll look best on line sheets and when you upload them to Etsy and Shopify. If they're not all the same size, then you can choose to size just on the width or the height by selecting the number of pixels that you want. So here we'd make all of our images 600 pixels wide, but they would have varying heights. And if you do it height-wise, then you would make all of your images, in this example again, 600 or let's say 500 pixels high, and they would have varying widths. Once you have made your scale choices, click Start Resizing and BulkResizePhotos.com resizes all of your photos and then delivers it back to you in a zip file. So you'll need to expand that file to get at your photos. So select the folder that you want your photos to go in 
and click Save, and that's all it takes. If you want to do a new batch of photos, simply click on that orange box that says Resize Another Batch, and you're ready to go. You can use something like Photoshop Elements. Uh, you may have Photoshop uh, already in your environment for graphic design. Uh, or you might want to use one of the online free tools. Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R, is a tool that uh, you can use for sizing photographs online. So here you can see it up here in the URL navigation box. It's Pixlr.com and you can register for a free account with Pixlr. And then you're going to go into their web tools and from there you can edit a photograph. So let's take a look at those steps so that we can talk about how and why you size photographs. Let's go into a folder and grab an image that we want to edit. Let's take this one. Okay, so we have this little opal necklace here. And the first thing you want to think about is uniformity of your images. If you have some images that are rectangles and some images that are squares, and if your rectangles are sometimes very low, wide rectangles, and sometimes they're closer to squares, when you go to print line sheets from Jewelry Designer Manager, your line sheets are going to look kind of screwy because all of your photographs are not uniform. So decide on a uniform strategy for your photographs. And this is true for your website presence, for your Etsy presence. You need to decide what uniform approach you're going to use with photographs and then use that approach all the time. And that involves some cropping. This is just the way a picture came right out of a camera. So in Pixlr, we go to this little adjustment window. But there's an adjustment window or something similar, an editing window in most different software packages. And here, this crop is where we're going to go crop the picture. And that's a universal symbol for crop, by the way. Now in Pixlr, note that when we pull this up, we have these options. We could make any ratio we want, or we could make a one-to-one -one ratio. Now watch how this changes. This one-to-one -one ratio, actually we're set at one-to-one -one now, so that's a square. Look at what a five-to-four ratio does. That's a rectangle. Now look at this four to three ratio. Still a rectangle, but it's shorter than it is one, you know, it's shorter than the last rectangle. Here's a three to two ratio, even shorter and wider. And here's a 16 to nine ratio. So once you decide what your uniform photo strategy is going to be, stick to your cropping ratios. For now, let's say we want to do a square. Squares tend to work really well on the internet and also on line sheets. Now we want to make sure that the photograph is as centered and it takes up as much of the space as possible without cropping out something important. That looks about right. This focus is on the uh, pendant itself, but then there's a sense of what the chain looks like as well. So we can apply that crop and now we have a square photo. I just opened up the crop box again, and what you'll see is that this photograph is 2,395 pixels wide by the same number of pixels high. That is a very large image. You would almost never need an image that large for printing unless you were going to be doing a, a huge splash page, you know, say close to a full page or a full page in a magazine. Then you might want a very large image. But the majority of the time, you don't need an image that large. And when it is that many pixels wide by that many pixels high, it's going to be a very large file. I've already saved this crop, so I'm not going to apply this time. I'm going to cancel. So now what we want to do is go into something called resize. And if you're in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, that's going to be under um, edit and then image, and then you'll be able to resize in there or somewhere in your edit menu. But in Pixlr, it's resize. Then we get a new box that says, okay, this is the size of your picture. And do you want to keep the proportions or not? Now, you, there's very rarely a situation when you don't want to keep your proportions. Because if you don't maintain the proportions, then it's going to stretch the image either vertically or horizontally and distort it. So we definitely want to see how it's off there. We definitely want to keep proportions on. And then here, let's say we want a an image that's actually 600 by 600. That's going to make a nice 
um, pop-out window on the web. For instance, if you um, have it on a website or on Etsy and somebody clicks on the image to enlarge it, 600 by 600 is a great sized image on a desktop. It will actually work on most mobile devices and in any case those systems are designed to go to the maximum size that mobile devices can use. So let's say we want to go with 600 by 600. We're going to apply. So now we have a much smaller image. That means that the file size is much smaller. So instead of being a couple of megabits large, it's probably down to under a, a megabit now. And then when we go save, we have one other option. And look at this option. It's called quality. So at 100% quality, oh, that, act, that image actually got a lot smaller than I thought. At 100% quality, this is 178 KBs instead of 2 or 3 megs. So you've already saved a tremendous amount of file space and m ensured that the file would load faster on the internet simply by cropping it and sizing it down from 2300 to 600. You could also reduce the quality here and therefore reduce the file size. See, now we're all the way down to 28 KB. That's a very small file. Once you're under 200 KB, you probably well, it, it depends. If you're going to use Jewelry Designer Manager to create line sheets and then print those line sheets, you need a file that has more data in it, more dots in color making up that picture. So the quality there is going to be important because if you reduce the quality too far for print, your printed item is going to look grainy. It's going to look indistinct. It won't have sharp edges. So that would be an argument for keeping that quality all the way up here at 100 because 178 KB still isn't a very big file and as long as it's not going to be a large picture that you're printing you'll get nice clarity. If you're never going to print anything then you could even go a bit smaller and try to get your file down around anywhere between 50 and 75 KB which is a great way um, in terms of your website, so remember you're also feeding some of these images to your website or Etsy, it's a great way to keep your website loading quickly because the more photographs that you put on the in your website, the more space they take up. And people want each image to load quickly and the smaller the image is, the faster it will load. So in this particular case, I'm just going to change it to about let's see 95 we're just gonna get it see just under 100 and now I'm going to rename it because that's my photograph 600 AA and then it's 600 pixels square for the web so it's downsized for the web and you can use whatever naming convention you want but that's one way to do it and then hit save and Pixlr is going to open you put you back into your file space and save that image so now let's go back to Jewelry Designer Manager. Now in Jewelry Parts, so we're going to go to this top menu, you also have this Photo Commands box on the right, but you'll see there are no dots at the bottom. So when it comes to your Jewelry Parts, you're only going to, lead one, uh, to load one photograph, and typically one photograph is sufficient. So when we open up this box, we pick the item that we are showing here. So this is going to be rough emerald and that's all you need to do. You'll load the one photograph and you'll finish adding all the information for that part and you're done. So that is a tip on how to manage your photography and load photography in Jewelry Designer Manager and we hope it was very helpful for you.